So we'll come to the, to the last presentation today. I'm Wissam Wahbe, I'm a research associate in the, um, in the Fachhochschule in Nordwest Schweiz, from Switzerland. And uh, actually, our, uh, my research, this was my postdoc research, and I'm going on with this, uh, this topic. Uh, and it's, uh, it's, as you can see from the title, it has two, a, bad, a bad news and a good news. So actually, the bad news is that a lot of, of monuments was destroyed the last uh, the last uh, few years as you may know already and the good news is that they are destroyed in the digital era in our digital era so we can recover something we can document something so that's that the, the the good part but actually it's more than than a bad news it's actually a disaster it's a disaster for humanity it's a disaster for the city the, the cities where 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 they uh, they was uh, <coughs> they was destroyed those monuments. But I I will, I'm going to speak about uh, how I'm trying to reconstruct those those monuments. Obviously, a lot of photogrammetry uh, because it's the only way to reconstruct something that is not not anymore exists is to use the photos of this of those buildings of those monuments. <coughs> I, I will speak about an example, it's, it's the Arch of Triumph that you can see here. This is, uh, uh, this is the Arch, which is the, the symbol of the, the city of Palmyra in Syria. It's a symbol of Syria, actually, when, when we are speaking about tourism and we are speaking about archaeology, it's a very important monument. It was destroyed with other monuments like this Temple of Belvedere and other other monuments in Syria, in Iraq, in Mosul. So there are there, they was destroyed with the, with the Islamic State, with what the so-called Islamic State. So actually, we are trying to do something just to document what what it was and and uh, um, and to save. Let's uh, let's say the memory of those buildings. Uh, uh, let's speak about Palmyra a little bit. Here is Palmyra. It's in the center of, of the country of, the, of Syria. It's in the desert. Actually, it's a very small city, uh, and it actually has nothing more as income as the other than tourism. So it's, it's actually a disaster even for the city, it's the, de uh, the, the demolition of the, or the destruction of those monuments. As you can see, it's in the desert, it has uh, many people in the city works on, on tur in tourism and, and in those years of war, they are actually in bad situations. It's, it's, it's the only income for the, for the for the city and it's actually based the economy of the city is based on tourism or just which is destroyed. Uh, not completely but many of the monuments are destroyed. Uh, our my research was in collaboration with the Dramatics Institute is is to, to use what we can collect from image, <coughs> professional image and open domain touristic image that we can collect to reconstruct those destroyed or damaged buildings uh, virtually. It's actually an idea that many researchers are, are working on, not only us. The many, uh, many platforms are online available to, for crowdsourcing image, so they can, uh, volunteers can upload their photos of, of the touristic photos of the monuments and, and the researcher can can or or who wants to reconstruct something can download them and and reconstruct them and obviously many other platforms photograph platforms uh, that we could, we could get a lot of of, uh, of uh, images that they were not protected in within copyrights we we could up, uh, download them and use them for the reconstruction as you can see, different monuments, different situations, size, geometries. It's it's uh, it's every time a workflow, a different workflow. 
a different a different data, different um, qualities that we can get from from different reconstruction. The example I will show you today is the reconstruction of this arc, and uh, this is this is a photo from 2010. This was uh, one year before uh, the beginning of the problems in Syria and and five years before the destruction of this this building. This is the situation now. Though, so we have. We have only those rests. This is a, a reconstructed part, uh, and this is an original, an original one. So here you can see the arch is the original part, and here we have behind a reconstructed part a few years ago. And this is the uh, the the view from up, the side view of the of the arch. Of the model, the final model of the arch, <coughs> only a uh, visualization, but just to show what are what are the the patterns, the image patterns we use to to reconstruct. So, actually, we we used many touristic photos in actually normally uh, very in in different positions, but they are more or less concentrated on the interesting part part of, of the more of the of the monuments and uh, and three professional photos, the professional panoramas that they can capture, multi image panoramas captured with a panoramic head that they can they uh, they have a very high resolution and and uh, um, no parallax problems when we want to combine 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 panorama photos and cash and uh, we found even three images that they were they were uh, they they co can compose even a panorama because they were captured from the same from the from the, the same place. So actually, there are all single pan single images with those three professional <coughs> panoramas. They did with, my, with from, my, my, from my colleague, with which he was in Syria in 2010, and he captured those photos. Actually, what we can not, we couldn't find are images in the right and the left of the monuments because actually here we have a very long, a very long uh, uh, way, colonnade way that we can see here. This is a very long way where the tourists enjoy the place and enjoy to, to imagine how it was before. So they pass here and they capture photos. So we have photos of the monuments, even from two kilometers distance from this monument. So uh, we have photos from this side, from the side behind, which is the access to this, uh, to this street, uh, this main colonnade street, but actually we don't have from the right and the left. Actually, this zone you can see here is this this photo from this zone so the tourists come here and they walk there and they go back and so we have a lot of photos on this side and the other side but not from here for example and if you you know with photogrammetry that if we don't have enough photos we can get a, a, a good reconstruction reconstruction so that was the only useful photo that we could could find for this place, so for this from this side, so actually it it helped to to know how it could be reconstructed, but we could then create a, a, a generate a 3D information from well, obviously from one photo. So actually, what what we did is to group the photos into into groups, into groups. So we constructed the side, this this side and this side, and you can see this here. So there are blue, dark blue, and light blue point clouds. This is a photogrammetric, photogrammetric reconstruction, this dense matching uh, <coughs> reconstruction. And uh, oh, what we produced is, is, this, is this mesh. So it was, it was very nice mesh, but actually it's not complete as, as it's, it's, uh, you, can, you can imagine. So here we, have, we just have, have the data that we could collect, we can't go there and capture more photos because we don't, we don't, have, we don't have the object. And uh, uh, what, what, is, what was our goal from this, uh, from this reconstruction is the documentation which is composed 
of, uh, of uh, a visualization of this monument so we can use it uh, in the future maybe in virtual virtual representation of virtual museums or, or virtual reality uh, representation but what the idea was even to maybe we can use it in a future reconstruction a future reconstruction needs a very accurate models to, to get from information, details and, and measurements so uh, we, we, can, we can we we thought that we can complete the model to get a very nice representation with texture model but we could even evaluate what are, what are the, the, the quality of the model but the quality is different from so, from one zone to another one so actually we couldn't have we couldn't do our our photos so we will accept what we have we will create what we have we will create it nice to to, to see and we will evaluate what are the, the what are the quality of every site so when we, uh, we are speaking about the scientific research we will we will we will use maybe the parts that uh, think that they are accurate and when we are speaking about visualization we can take all the whole model to, to visualize so this is the idea here I want to show that this is one of the professional panoramas and here we overlapped this uh, this part of the uh, of the dense mesh produced by photogrammetry using the, those open domains photos plus the image the panoramic image so uh, as you can see looking from the center of the panorama they overlap very well so the idea was to reconstruct it as 3d modeling a normal 3d modeling basing on on the on the projection of the panoramas so it's easy to know that we can already constru construct this part just extending those lines we can extend the arch to 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 to, to reconstruct the rest of this is not only an example, so I just cut it to, to show the correspondence, but actually if I miss a part from the model, I can complete it with 3D modeling. But 3D modeling is based on panoramic images, it's not as simple as 3D modeling. So actually, uh, what, what we did is to create the model, create the, the dense mesh, which wasn't complete, this part was not complete, it was 3D modeled using the projection of the panoramas. When we need a 3D depth, we could project more than one panorama and to, and to triangulate to, to, to find the depth of one point. So we, can we could define some points here when there are irregularity in, in, the, in the model. But when we speak about a surface, for example, this surface here, it could be evaluated and extended so that's what we did and here you can see the comparison between the final model and, and the raw mesh model that we could get only from the dense mesh so here you can see for example this opening that you can notice here in this panorama and we just simplified the geometry but we completed it we used some points from this uh, mesh already existing already the mesh that from photogrammetry uh, dense matching and we extended with modeling this is more detailed so as as two concepts they are very different so actually using uh, dense multi-view 3d reconstruction we can we use we can use the image, the single image or, or panoramic image. The output is, is generated automatically, but in the, in the other case, we are using all spherical panoramas, all this 3D modeling software. They, they understand the speed, the speed, they can project from one point the sphere because it's the central projection. That's what happens with the photos that we have a central projection. So we have to use equirectangular panoramas. And and it's selective that it's I, I will see I will say that I need this point I need this point and I will intersect the, the lines to get this the, the depth of this those points uh, and the output the post processing here we can 
we can use uh, because different software that they manage that mesh the dense meshes and uh, uh, in in the case of uh, of modeling based on panoramas we can we can uh, work with with uh, low poly structural structured mesh so it's very simplified and the work you know, obviously it's manual in this case and automatic in the other <coughs> other case the workflow is I, I just want to simplify it. so it's actually starting from image to the final model which includes the texture models and the analysis of the quality of the of the mesh or the reconstruction that the the, the dense uh, multi 3D reconstruction. So it start from from the image with our uh, rectilinear image, normal photos or panoramic image. So those with 3D uh, reconstruction, dense multiple 3D reconstruction, we can get the reconstruction with the mesh uh, of the point cloud and the mesh that it produces and it orient the photos. So the process obviously includes includes orienting the photos before reconstructing, generating 3D, 3D point cloud. So the, uh, the reconstruction here produce dense meshes and then, and then we could use the image orientation to, to project the panoramas. So they, the panoramas, they, they will use a single image because they are multi, multi view panoramas to to, to generate the, the reconstruction, but we even could export the orientation of those panoramas, and and then we create our our model using those panoramas, those inter, uh, manual uh, intersection of the rays in the space, and we could produce a local image here to complete what is missing in this in this case. And then we unify the models. We could use some reference point from from dense <coughs> meshes, the dense meshes in this in this process. We unify the model. We uh, we clean the mesh. We texture it with the image that we have. Texturing is important to know that when we don't we don't have enough image, we couldn't have three D three D points. The depths uh, we can calculate. We can't calculate the depths. But actually, we, we, we can use them if they are oriented to texture the mesh. So if it, it's simplified mesh, actually texturing it, it will give us a very important information. This is a small video, I think they don't have time, but I just will show you how they were projected. Okay, those are the three panoramas, and this is the final model. So those are were projected. Now it's only a visualization of how they how they correspond to the model, but actually it's using the rays. We can we can intersection of the rays. We can uh, define the depth of this. This is only an example in this using this art, but we we use them for the low parts where where we didn't add an intersection. Actually, that's what what use that what you do do the software automatically, but uh, but we did it manually when the software couldn't be able to do it. And actually, the last the last concept is how to evaluate the quality. I think I have no time, but I just want to do our three phases. It's uh, it's uh, it's important to deliver with with the model how many. Uh, or, or what's the quality in every part of the model? If if we don't, we want it to be uh, usable in, in from the scientific point of view. So we uh, we came up with some ideas. For example, when we know that which part uh, in which part how many images contributed in the reconstruction, it's important information. But as we said, as we saw today morning from the from the um, group from Heidelberg, it's not it's not necessary if you have a lot of image that that the, the construction is very well well done because they could be even low resolution image or, or uh, bad quality image. So you can even we, we we thought that we can even add some overlap some other information. So to the model we can add the information about about, uh, about the density of the of the base mesh it, it uh, produced. So if the, 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 more, uh, the number of images is high, the density is high, it's, 
that that we have the, it's the possible it's possible that the model it's it's good well done in some places so it, we can overlap them and maybe adding even uh, information about the noise of the image it could be it could be useful to 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 recognize where are the part, the good parts of the models where are the parts that are that are useful only the for visualization but actually they are not so accurate that's that's why that's because we have no reference no now no real model no no scan uh, laser scan for example to compare it with so thank you very much <laughs> sorry to be late